I'm Patrick Brown, and this is Scripture, the verse of Scripture. Today we're going to talk about Melchizedek, the superior priesthood. Melchizedek, the superior priesthood. And I want you to know that you, if you're a believer in Christ Jesus, you are a priest and a king after the order of Melchizedek. You are a king. You know, you're not a, a, a priest after the order of Aaron or the Levites. No, no. You're a king and priest after the order of Melchizedek. And we're going to talk about how his priesthood is superior to that of the Levites. Now, first of all, the first point that we need to understand here is a couple of points here. First point is that Jesus himself is a priest after the order of Melchizedek. Jesus himself is a priest after the order of Melchizedek. Jesus is not a priest after the order of Levi. He never was, right? Okay. He's he's a, he's a descendant. Of, he, he's a descendant of Judah. Okay. He's from the tribe of Judah. No, no, no priest come from the tribe of Judah. The priest come from the tribe or the descendants of Levi. All right. So here we got here in Hebrews 7 and 17 says, for it is witness of him, him being Christ. You are a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. OK, it's in the scriptures. All right. It's in the Old Testament as well. As a matter of fact, this quote is taken from the Old Testament that Jesus is a priest after the order of Melchizedek. All right. So. The other priests are after the line of Levi. If you look in the Bible, in the Old Testament, you see that every priest came from the lineage of Levi. Okay. Kings and priests or were not anyone could be a priest just like uh, today. You know, you want to be or anyone could be a king. No, you had to be a descendant of a king. You had, you had to be the seed of a king, a descendant of the king to be a king. And you had to be the seed of a priest. A descendant of a priest to be a priest. There's no, you know, no uh, amb ambiguity about this or, or, or confusion. No, w w what was going on in the Bible was laid out clear. Now, when Jesus came along, because he was not a descendant of Levi, God saw fit to show that there was a priesthood that was superior to that of Levi, and that's the priesthood that Jesus belongs to, and that is the line of and the order of Melchizedek. Let's look further at this. Even if we are the children uh, uh, of uh, Abraham, or when I say that, the blood of the descendants of Abraham, if we are the blood descendants of the Hebrews or anything like that, okay, that does not give us the right, does not give us the ability to be the kind of priest that we're talking about now, the New Testament priest. That's an Old Testament priest, yes, not the New Testament priest. Not the new line, not the new order, not the kind of priest that Jesus is after the line and order of Melchizedek. If we are the children of faith, then that is what it gives us righteousness. OK, it's not our blood. It's not our heritage. It's not being a descendant of a Hebrew. No, no. Being a child of faith gives you the access to this line and this priesthood. The Bible says this in Galatians chapter three, verse six. Even as Abraham believed God and he was counted to him for righteousness. Ye, know ye therefore that they which are of faith, the same are the children of Abraham. And the scripture, foreseeing that God would justify the heathen through faith. Through what faith? Who? The heathen. All unbelievers. Through faith. Preached before the gospel unto Abraham, saying, In thee, and you, Abraham, shall all nations be blessed. So then, they which be of faith are blessed with faithful Abraham. Verse 9. So then they which be of faith are blessed with faith of Abraham. Who? Those that are the blood descendants, those that are come from your line. No, they that be of faith are blessed with faith of Abraham. I'm going to go back to the first part, uh, uh, verse 3. Even if Abraham believed God and it was accounted to him for righteousness, know you therefore that they which are of faith, the same are the children of Abraham. I don't know how it's clear the Bible can make this, right? It's faith, not blood, not lineage. It's faith. That put you in the line and the order of Melchizedek, the new priesthood, the priesthood that Christ is of. All right. Even if we are Hebrews in the flesh, that does not make us kings and priests. Right. Even if we Hebrews doesn't make us kings and priests. Being a son of the king or a son of a priest makes you king and priest. Remember what I say? You had to have lineage. Well, wait a minute. Spiritually, being a child of God makes us a king. Spiritually. Being a child of God makes us a priest. Why? Jesus is both king and priest. Jesus is both king and priest. 
And if we are children of God, we are now kings and priests because we are descendants of the Holy God who is of the order of Melchizedek. Okay, there's a physical and then there's a spiritual. God has made us spiritual kings and priests, even though we are, as some of us, a lot of us, are not of the line of, the, of Abraham, or are not Hebrews, are not Jews, are not, not any of those things. But through faith, you are a descendant because God is talking about a spiritual thing here, a spiritual work. So we are both kings and priests under the order of Melchizedek. If you are in Christ, if you are in Christ, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Behold, old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become brand new. That old designation that you were doesn't matter. The only thing that matters to God is your new designation. Are you in Christ or not? Are you descendant of Christ? Are you a new king? Are you the priest? Right? He says, God has made us kings and priests. Right? Roman, uh, excuse me. Revelation chapter 1. Verse 5 and 6. And from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness and the first begotten of the dead and the prince of the kings of the earth, unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood. And, verse 6, and have made us kings and priests unto God and his father. To him be glory, dominion forever and ever. Who has made us kings and priests? Again, Jesus Christ has made us kings and priests because he is after the order of Melchizedek. And if we are in Christ, we are after the order of Melchizedek as well, who was both a king and a priest. It is really that simple. The Bible has laid it out bare and plain for us to see how we are kings and priests today, even if you are not after the bloodline of Levi. Right? This is better than the law. Being a priest after the order of Melchizedek is better than being a priest after the order of Levi, the New Testament is better than the Old Testament. The new promise, the new covenant is better than the old promise, the old covenant. We must understand this. What does the scripture say? How do I know that this is better? The order of Melchizedek is better. The priest of the Melchizedek is better. The Bible says so, right? When we look at Hebrews chapter seven, verses four through seven, it says this, consider how great Melchizedek was, the, the, the king and priest Melchizedek. Even the patriarch Abraham gave him a tent of the plunder. Wait a minute. Abraham paid tithes to Melchizedek. Melchizedek didn't pay tithes to Abraham, right? Now the law commands the sons of Levi who became priests to collect a tent from the people. Now the, the law commands that Levi, who is the Old Testament priest, the priest under the law, to collect the tent from the people, from everyone else, from all the other uh, descendants of Abraham. That is from their brothers, though they too are descendants from Abraham. But Melchizedek, who did not trace his descent from Levi, Melchizedek is not a descendant of Levi, collected a tent from Abraham and blessed him who had the promises. Right now, Melchizedek blessed Abraham. He received a tent and then he blessed Abraham. The Bible is going to tell you without any exceptions. This principle holds true, and here it is. And indisputably, the lesser is blessed by the greater. Without contradiction, that's what the King James says. Uh, without contradiction, the lesser is blessed by the greater. Well, who was lesser here? Abraham. Who was greater? Melchizedek. Because Melchizedek blessed Abraham. Who and who is Levi? A descendant of Abraham. If Melchizedek is greater than Abraham, Levi's father, forefather, then Melchizedek is also greater than Levi. That's the way it works. In the Bible, your father is the father is greater than the son. The, the son called the father Lord. The, 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 the father never called the son Lord. Right? That's the way it goes. Wait a minute. So Melchizedek is greater than Father Abraham. All the other descendants of Abraham can be assured that Melchizedek in God's estimation is greater than them as well. This is the greatest priesthood there is, is Melchizedek. And believer, if you are a follower of Jesus Christ, that's the priesthood you are. Amen. Hope that lesson hit home, right? Melchizedek is the greatest priesthood and you are a priest after the order of Melchizedek. Let us bow. 
Dear Heavenly Father and Father God, Lord, we just thank you for your word. We pray that it hit home. Oh, Heavenly Father, we pray that people open their eyes and understand, Lord, that the New Testament, the new promise, the new covenant, Lord, is greater. All right. And it's based on better promises, Lord, and a better priesthood. That priesthood, Lord, is what we are part of if we are truly born again and in Christ. I pray that everyone inside of my voice is just that. It is in Jesus' holy name we pray.